thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I know this is a super busy time. First, great that you're in Toronto, because the last time we were supposed to see each other, we missed each other because you were at twice. the uh, twice, <laughs> but the last time was the MMBA. Yeah, exactly, it was the MMBAs, and earlier this year was the uh, Canadian Music Week. Yep. But you're the one who's too busy. Oh, please. <laughs> okay, for folks who are listening to this or watching this whole interview on Rudy Blair Entertainment Media, Canadian Music Week, she literally ran by me and back again <laughs> at a global <laughs> conference, and I'm not kidding. I sat there, she ran by, said hello to somebody, and ran back. Yeah, I guess I have a lot of friends, but I, I but I wanted because I I texted you, so I you know I wanted to see you. Yeah, yeah, but I was at another event that I couldn't get you in and I couldn't get out of. Then yeah, exactly. MMVAs, she's at the party. I'm at the red carpet and dealing with all the business. How was the party? I really love the MMVAs. First of all, this is such like a, a dream come true to be there because like I've always like. You know, when you look up to the MFAs, it's where you want to be when you're an artist. Like, it's just like a, a good recognition and stuff. So, and it's so awesome to see, like, so many artists, like, in the backstage. Because, like, the ones that we see on the red carpets, those are, like, the, like, um, the world star, I would say. Like, Sean Menendez and stuff. But there's also a lot of awesome artists that are probably not on the red carpet, but are backstage. And they're pretty... Uh, t um, talented and uh, you know they're just awesome so it was just cool to see a lot of people and hang out with artists well you look like you had a lot of fun yeah. people should go on your Instagram because you're always on it yeah um, and social media too that's really important for you to connect with fans and let them know what you're doing and things like that I think it's because first of all the more I talked about like um, the way I see myself as an artist and the way women should be seen as like on the outside world mm -hmm. I think a lot of people told me like oh because like you're so like outspoken about like the way we should like be proud of ourselves proud of our bodies like a lot of women like reach out to me to say that uh, I'm an artist that they want to relate to so I think it's a good I think it's good for me to be able to um, let people know that you can be like a plus size kind of girl and you know make still make it in the music industry like you don't have to be like a certain type of body type to you know be successful one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure that we talked is the first time we met was about two or three years ago yeah. for Canadian Music Week and I felt that I did not really get the real story about you because uh, after that we started following each other on social media there are so many different aspects of you <laughs> and so many things that you're doing and you actually just mentioned some things too and I want to get into that but okay. before that um, I want to get into the whole thing with the love of music yeah. and some people here in Toronto would notice you have a certain accent when you speak English. Yeah, exactly. I'm from Montreal, so I'm a French Canadian. I was really more known in the province of Quebec because of my pre previous band, The Garlics, that I mentioned in your previous interview. Um, and uh, I don't know, there's like so many aspects to your question. So first of all, like, yeah, so um, I, I studied like for six years in university because like I'm an artist, but I wanted to be more... Um, I would say um, effective like on the behind the scenes camera stuff so like to know how to deal contracts to know what are my rights and uh, yeah I'm, I'm so, a nerd. So what did you, nerd, no yeah. you're not a nerd you're smart because what did you take I think you're becoming yeah. a lawyer or something. Like uh, no I just finished law school but law I'm not school. gonna like I'm not gonna do the bar exam yet because mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to do first of all the bar exam in Quebec or in Ontario and second of all I want to focus on my music career fully because I was always living a double life with the university and stuff. But I have, actually, I, um, I finished my bachelor degree in journalism, so I guess, uh, I, yeah, six years in university, so both. Congratulations on that. But growing up, though, what was it about music that you loved so much about? I think I just love writing music in general. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I have so many things to say, and I feel like as a young listener myself, I didn't really relate to a lot of, like, women out there. I feel like uh, they didn't really wrote their songs. And I feel like, you know, One Night was a song about being in charge of your own body and your own sexuality. And, like, it's so taboo for women to be in charge of their own sexuality these days. So I thought, like, One Night was about, you know, it talks about a one night stand, but it shouldn't be, like, as taboo as we see it for women to have one night stand as men's like so. okay now here's it this is what's interesting folks because when we talked about this interview the first time yeah. this song the first time your dad had accompanied you and all i kept <laughs> thinking to myself was here she is talking about a one night stand and her dad is like yeah. three or four feet away you had no problem with actually that. i was raised by both feminist parents mm -hmm. i would say like so both my dad and my mom's uh, raised me to be a strong woman and i think um i don't know my my daddy just knows that um I, as long as they're consent and like both parties are like um, 
consent like mm -hmm. they give their consent it's a good thing and I don't know I think like m my mom is a strong woman like a really strong woman I think my dad like has to know that and understand that and see my mom as equal because otherwise they wouldn't be together so I guess like I don't know I just like I'm really close to my dad I don't talk that much to my dad but he knows like even the music video like I I'm like it's not about my own sexuality because my dad was like are we gonna say to people like this is a coming out because like I, I kind of give a glimpse of like something with the girl like just a suggestive kind of mm -hmm. like video but nothing really happens and I think my dad was like is it like a coming out for you I was like no like I'm like an heterosexual but that's not the point I had to make a message for other people like they're listening to my music that they can relate to it like my private life is mine but when I do music video there's a story to tell okay so but growing up though you still had to deal with what a lot of young young ladies and women deal with is this whole body image thing talk a little bit what it was like growing up and dealing with that because as we know magazines try to show women one thing and we all know especially now not realistic especially yeah. now when you've got um uh, cameras and pictures or, or phones that can change up your whole image completely and that's not how people always look mm -hmm. well i didn't really relate to anybody when i was growing up because like the ashley grams of this world just came like three years ago like we didn't see those girls so i didn't relate and i was really a chubby kind of girl so i couldn't really uh, relate to fashion in general and then as I grew older I just I was always like a sportive girl so I, I, I guess it just like it, it went back into like the right place I, I, I say to myself I say to people and to myself that I'm at an LP size so like I'm not thin but I'm not like in I feel like I'm the Bermuda Triangle like I'm too large for the thin size fashion but like I'm not large enough for the plus size when I, I shop so I'm like in the Bermuda Triangle but I feel like um, it was important for me in my music career to um, show confidence like and to, it, if I believed it myself it would be easier for other girls that um, are younger and would be the same position as I was to relate to me and say like okay like if she's like more curvy and she can love herself like maybe I can too and for me that's important. Do you look at yourself as a solo artist now? Yeah yeah totally I love to do like a lot of covers with like other artists in Quebec that's like my official MW covers are about I like to just I'm a team player so I guess like even though I'm a solo artist now, I like to work on music with other people. So all the covers are always done with other people and other artists. And I just love the, the whole like brainstorm that comes out of like every time I work with someone. That's one of the reasons why you're here in Toronto, because you're working with a good friend of mine. I'll let you say his name because it goes with a K well, if it and a W. Cancel, we don't know these days, but uh, I'm supposed to see Carl Wolf tomorrow and do a writing session, mm -hmm. but it's tomorrow. So a lot of things can happen. But like, uh, yeah, I'm supposed to see Carl Wolf. It's it's pretty amazing because, first of all, not a lot of people know, but he's from Montreal. And um, and I know he's just like he's part of like I grew up listening to him. I don't want to make him look that older, but I mean, like, I just grew up listening to like his music, and I actually I train a lot to his music. So I guess like he's such a good melodist and like um, songwriter in general that I, I it's just like an honor to to work with him. Like I just actually I saw him at the MMVAs, and I was just like, hey, by the way, like uh, if you if you want to songwrite with me, like I would be glad to. I would be actually excited to do something with you and just like brainstorm. It, it, the thing is like in the music industry. We don't mind that the writing session doesn't end up at something like um, concrete or it's like something like that you can actually like um, publish and stuff. But it's just like to work with somebody and have other ideas and to learn actually from the other person how they songwrite and stuff. So. But you have a single as we speak that's coming up. What's yeah. this song? What's it about? And when is it going to be released? Okay, so it's called One in the Same. And I'm actually, I brought a female rapper on the track called Naya Ali. She's a female Montreal rapper. Um, and the one in the, one in the same is going to be released uh, October 5th mm -hmm. and it's about um, how, how, how can we can I say this in English it's about like how history repeats itself and how we tend to um, exclude certain types of people because like history tells us to and I'm asking the question in the in the chorus are we one in the same mm. so it's yeah it's 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 really pop and not much people are gonna probably um, see this degree of uh, lyrics in the song because it's you know I, I there's I got to put in the in a pop version 
But yeah, the song is basically about like, are we one in the same lake? I'm, get, I'm, I'm interested though. Are you doing both French and English? Because people should know that Montreal, the province of Quebec, is its own yeah, like literally market. yeah market completely. So do you do one in English, one in French, or is it no. English or is it French? Actually, no. I, I it's like we did both like Franklish versions of songs. But mm -hmm. right now I'm when I write my song, if it goes out in English, I'm just gonna really sit in English. Uh, if I write a song and it comes out in French, I'm gonna really sing it in French. But uh, it's always like two different market. But no, this one is only in English. Um, and but yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have another song in French that is gonna be released only in Quebec. It's for a, a fundraiser project for uh, suicide prevention. I wrote this song about that. So yeah, it, it always depends on like where the um, inspiration comes from, like in what language. What chances are we going to have you coming back to Toronto to perform? And what's going to happen with the rest of 2018 leading up to 2019? I could probably um, answer your question after I meet my management. <laughs> That's what you got to do today. <laughs> so yeah, I got to meet my management like uh, after we see each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to probably uh, tell you more. I, I, I have release, I have a single release planned that I have in my mind, but I'm, you know, it's now it's not only in my hands. Okay, well look, before we go, because like I said, you are such an inspiration. Oh, thank you. What, what advice can you give some folks who are, you know, they're having that tough time and, you know, they just want to be able to achieve what they want to achieve. But here's the thing, I'm going to ask if you can say it in French. What advice can you give them, please? You want me to give this in, in, in French? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um... Now I have my, my brain switched to English, so it's kind of like, shoo, okay. Um, je dirais... De, de, ma mère m'a dit récemment de faire confiance à la vie. Uh, des fois, c'est bon de créer ces opportunités, mais il faut faire confiance à la vie. Il uh, faut se faire confiance, puis il faut comprendre qu'il faut aimer le processus et pas juste les résultats. So it's about like loving the process and not only the results. And like my mom said, it's about like having trust, uh, trusting life actually. Like you create your own, your own opportunities, but then you gotta have faith in life that you know it's gonna, it's gonna happen some, somehow, someday. But still like it's about loving the process because it's a long way, it's a long journey, but it's about loving. Like I said, follow this young lady on social media. Where do we go? All the platforms, because you got them all. Yeah, okay, so Instagram, uh, Miwell's official. Uh, same thing for Facebook, so facebook.com slash Maywell's Official. My YouTube channel is Maywell's Official too. Uh, I think it's only the Twitter, it's Maywell's Music. So, uh, you have it, yeah, I think I have, I have it all. Yeah. And people should realize there, you, there are two different ones, right? Uh, the what? The You have a personal and you have yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you followed my personal. I, I yeah. put it down to private because uh, I had more followers on my private one and I wanted to <laughs> switch. But yeah, my, pri my private one was more about like fitness and like school stuff. Yeah. While like I wanted to only give people music stuff on my uh, music Instagram. So follow on the music. Yeah, follow me on the music. Fantastic. It's more interesting than me doing some squats. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Thank you so much for doing the interview. I got to let you go because you've got things you got to do. But finally, thank you yeah, so much for doing the interview. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love you.